we need to stand firm in defending the Rosa Parks today. Rosa Parks the gun owner, Rosa Parks the tax protester, Rosa Parks the rancher, or the citizen who simply wants to be left alone. Next one. Badge versus the badge. I didn't make this up either, but we sure promote it big time. This is an article out of Range Magazine in 2003. You can check their website. You can find the article for yourself. But I took three clips out of it. We're going to see those right now. First one. Right arrow. There you go. Sheriff Gary Amon from uh, O.E. County made it clear that he didn't want BLM help in local law enforcement and warned that he expected to be notified of any federal investigation or enforcement action, including impoundment of cattle the feds considered to be trespassing on U.S. property. And he said, to hell with that. And he told them flat out. And he wasn't alone. Look at the next one. Sheriff Gary, uh, Gary uh, Penrod from San Bernardino, California. Well, he's not the sheriff now, I guarantee you. Okay? He, there's been two since then, I believe. Yeah, there's been two. Sheriff Hooks after him, and then I don't know. But it's a typical Californian who doesn't think you have to do anything. Sheriff Penrod said, this isn't going to happen in my county anymore. Look what he said. Sheriff simply revoked local law enforcement authority from the federal government across all 20,000 acre square miles of his county and advised them to consult him first before taking any action on private property. Wow. I would say that if a California sheriff can do it, Oregon sheriffs can do it. Okay, next one. And of course, Sheriff uh, Ken Jones from Eureka County, Nevada, what they really want is to extend federal authority over all law enforcement in the United States, whether local people agree with that or not, says Jones, well, it's not in this county. It's all we're after. It's all we're after. my life to this. I have sworn 
with a firm reliance in providence as we mutually pledge to each other our lives and fortunes and sacred honor and to emulate the founders. And I'm asking you tonight to emulate the founders and join with us in this holy cause so that we can still keep this peaceful so that we can make this effective, who are out to set other men free, will be there and it's automatic. And they know Goliath. And they recognize Goliath for who he is. And they stand against Goliath. And you stand with them. And we don't have a lot of time. And we need your financial support. We need you to join CSPOA tonight. I'm asking you, everybody here, I'm asking you to join. There's a little card out there you can join. And I'm asking you to join us in this holy cause of liberty. And let me tell you right now, let me tell you right now, if you can't afford it, sign it anyway, and we'll have somebody else I know we'll have somebody else and other donations coming in to cover your, your $50 membership. And with that, you get the best book in the country on the sheriff, free. That's yours. And then the follow-up, the sequel to that, you get it for 30, 33% off. Okay? We want you to have these tools of liberty in your hand. We want you to be part of this restoration. Do you really think that we can make this happen? Without you. We, the people, has to be involved in this process. If you join with us, every single one who joins with us makes us that much more powerful. I'm telling you, I don't see any other way. If you're waiting for me to pay for all this, I don't have it. I've been a cop and a sheriff, and I have no retirement. Hell, I take that back. I just started my social security last year. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I think I'm gonna take my wife to Hawaii on that every other month. <laughs> All $1,200 of it, okay? We've dedicated our life to this. And I'm asking you to do the same. I'm not asking you, believe me, I'm not asking you for your fortune. I'm just asking for you to do what you can. If you can do more, do more. If you can't do the 50, sign the card, turn it in tonight. I have to tell you, that I've had something happen to me when I've been up here today, tonight. <coughs> died in 2011. And I wasn't feeling very good, I guess, because of the flights and everything that's going on and the pressure that I felt, the stress that I've been under. And I said a special prayer that, some, that something would help me tonight. And I'll be darned if it wasn't the face of my mother. And a couple of times if you saw me pause, that's because I was looking at her. And um, I apologize for this, but I want you to know this is God's work. And His angels are here helping us. Certainly mine has been here tonight. And I pray that uh, each of you will join us in this work. And I dedicate this to each of you. And I dedicate it to your children. 
Because I know if it's dedicated to your children, it's dedicated to mine. And I can honestly say, my 12 grandchildren are the bulk of this. But I can honestly say too, regarding my mother, I can say the same thing as Abraham Lincoln said. Everything I am and hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. And another thing that Abraham Lincoln said that I totally believe with all my heart is America will never be destroyed by an outside enemy. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroy ourselves. My dear friends, join us in keeping America from being destroyed from within. The greatest threat to America is not ISIS. The greatest threat to America is our own federal government and the United Nations. Now, it becomes our duty and our responsibility to make sure that does not happen. I'm going to ask you one more time. Join us in this holy cause. I cannot do it alone. I'll do it every, every day, and I'll do it every waking moment, and my wife does it with me, and we're expanding, and we have some people in Texas who are helping us expand. And oh, and by the way, the Supreme Court case costs 400000 How about we raise that tonight and put it back in the coffers? No. And that was another miracle. I had no idea how I was going to pay for this lawsuit. I had no lawyer. I had no backup. The county was totally against me. I had nowhere to go. And my undersheriff walks in the room while I'm contemplating all this. And, I said, and he said something about the NRA. I said, Mike, you're a member of the NRA. He goes, yeah, life member. I was never a member. And I go, do they have like a toll-free number you could call and get advice? And he goes, yeah. And he gave me the card, and the toll-free number, and I called it. And I thought, what a waste of time. I'm looking at all this. I get passed around, passed around, like call in Washington, D.C. Finally. I end up in the office of Richard Gardner, an attorney for the NRA. And I told him who I was and what I wanted to do. And he said this, and this next line changed my life forever. He said, Sheriff, we've already been pre preparing the paperwork on this case. And we've been praying that you would call. And I said, hallelujah. And he says, We're good. we've got the money already. He says, we've got uh, all of it planned out. We've got members of the NRA that are going to fund this. And he says, all we need is you to sign the dotted line. And I said, I'll be there tomorrow. And he says, you don't have to. We have an office in, in Phoenix. <laughs> and I said, okay. And I said, I thought this was going to totally offend them. And I said, I have to tell you, though, I don't want this to be the NRA case. I want it to be my case. It has to be my case. Me doing something what I promised my people I would do. He said, I would like my own lawyer. And he goes, that's fine. We'll work with your lawyer. And I said, great. Do you know one out here in Arizona <laughs> that knows and understands the Second Amendment, the Constitution? He said, yeah, of course. His name's Dave Hardy. He lives in Tucson, and he used to work for us. I said, great. So I called Hardy and retained him as my personal lawyer on this and uh, on, the, on uh, February 28, 1994, the NRA lawyers and my lawyer filed in federal district court in Tucson, Arizona, Max versus U.S. And then a few weeks later, they did the same in uh, Ravalli County, Montana, with Sheriff Prince. And then one joined from Texas, one, one from Texas out of 254 sheriffs, one. And then, yeah, in a state sovereignty gun rights case, we get one sheriff out of that state. So, and then one from Mississippi, one from Louisiana, one from Vermont, one from Wyoming, and then Prince from Montana and myself from Arizona. So, my dear friends, we've seen the power of one. Now just imagine that we have hundreds of sheriffs doing what they're supposed to be doing. And can I, I'll leave you with one final story. 
Sheriff Brad Rogers from Elkhart County, Indiana, and you'll see the story in here. And you'll see other stories about other sheriffs, Sheriff Paul Murray included. Sheriff uh, Rogers calls me about three and a half years ago, and he said, the FDA just threatened to arrest me. And I said, I can't think of a better guy. I said, what'd you, good, what'd you do good now? And he said, there's an Amish farmer in my county who refuses to pasteurize his milk. And I said, that's all of them. He goes, yeah, that's all of them. They don't believe it. They won't use the technology. They won't use the electricity to burn and destroy their milk. And I said, well, what's that got to do with you getting arrested by the FDA? And he says, well, they went after this guy on spot inspections, and he passed all of them. And you know how passive they are. They just keep inviting them back in. They said, well, we're coming back. And he goes, okay. Finally, even this Amish farmer got sick and tired of the FDA. You know that's pretty bad. And so the Amish farmer called the sheriff and said what the FDA was doing. Uh, Brad didn't even know. Sheriff Rogers didn't even know. He says, I'll be right out. He saw the paperwork they had left and what they were doing. So Sheriff Rogers calls the FDA and he says, if you come back into my county without duly signed warrants, probable cause, and due process, I'll arrest you for trespassing. Well, that sounds good, doesn't it? But they told him, if you interfere, you'll be obstructing justice, and we will charge you with a felony. Aha! Perfect. Now Brad's interested. If you'll help me write a letter to the FDA responding to their threat to arrest me, then I'm going to send it on, and then if they arrest me, they arrest me, and my wife will call you when that happens. I said, okay. He says, I'm not intimidated, not one bit. I said, let's do the letter. If any of you would like a, the copy of that letter, email me, and I'll get it to you. Okay, I still have it on my computer. It's an amazing letter. And three days after he sent them that letter, they get uh, the Amish farmer gets a certified letter telling him that everything against him had been dropped. Everything. And this was, it, this, this was going to go before a grand jury in Detroit. From Elkhart County, Indiana to Detroit for a grand jury investigation against this man. All of it was stopped, and the FDA hasn't been back in three years. Now, Brad admits they might come back sometime, but he's also told us publicly that he hopes he's the first sheriff in the country to arrest an IRS agent. He wants to graduate. <laughs> Time for a couple of questions? Okay. I'm going to trust you guys on this, okay? Remember, it has to be a question. How do you feel about the Constitution? Constitutional states are pretty good, actually. Most of the states' constitutions are pretty solid, but they do not supersede uh, the, the original Bill of Rights. They can't. But if you look at gun control, um, no, no state constitution allows it. In fact, there are some of them, most of them are even stronger. And the first state in the Union, which was? Delaware. First state. Delaware, thank you. Did they, anybody say Delaware? I did. Okay, look at their state constitution, how solid it is on um, the right to keep and bear arms. And it also says the sheriff is the conservative of the peace for the county, mandated by the constitution. Now, in that state, they have destroyed the office of sheriff. And Sheriff uh, Jeff Christopher from Sussex County, Delaware, was fighting it all the way. And the state Supreme Court sided with the state, which was Joe Biden. And, now he, and since then, he's passed away. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. i got to repeat the question. So his question was, what about state constitutions? I think I made a little bit. Of state. Of state. Oh, no, no. You're talking about CONCON. An Article 5 convention. Oh! I'm dead set against it. Okay? And I, I admit it's constitutional. But so is using the Second Amendment and keeping a bearing arms. And I'm not telling anybody to start shooting. Okay? And I don't, I don't believe that it will work. And I don't think it can work. And you, you just have to boil it down to one thing. Who is going to choose the delegates to the state convention? Okay? It's going to be your governor. If you trust her to pick the right delegates, then go for it. 
But you want me to tell you the truth? It's not going to be you, it's not going to be you, and it's not going to be Sheriff Palmer. Okay? It's not going to be anybody. It's going to be mainstream politicians, and if you trust them with the Bill of Rights, let's have it. Okay? I don't trust it at this time. Is it a lawful and constitutional process that the, the, the founding fathers supported? Of course, they put it in there. I wouldn't trust it right now. No way. And it would take, how long would it take to get all 37 states to agree to have one? You're talking years. CSPOA is not going to wait years to change this. And you know what? If you get constitutional sheriffs, it'll make that convention irrelevant. Because we'll restore liberty right here. Okay? One other one was over here in then Maggie. On January 2nd of this year, if you were the Harney County Sheriff, how would that have ended up out there at the Mount Here Refuge? And did our brave patriots out there do anything wrong? Um, they didn't do anything. You know, I, I, Ammon called me when he was in there. Okay? And I was in Burns that very day. I don't know how many of you know that. Okay? And this is a little bit what I was talking about. And I, and I rebuked Ammon. And Ammon is a good man. Don't ever let anybody say that he's not. I know he is. Ammon is a good man. And I love Ammon Bundy. He's a good friend of mine. And I live in an area in Arizona and work in an area in Arizona where he used to live and have his kids go to school. Every single person there and every teacher that knew him and every person in their church and everybody else said the same thing. They love Adam Bundy, one of the greatest people they've ever met. I totally disagree with the tactic. And this goes back again. If you're going to do something like that, if you're going to commit civil disobedience, and afterwards you want constitutional sheriffs to put their lives on the line for you, you would better involve them in the process beforehand. Okay? Make them a part of it. Okay? Now I know Adam went to talk to Sheriff Ward. But his talks with them, and he got me involved in those talks too, and I talked to Sheriff Ward. And Sheriff Ward is not a constitutional sheriff. I hope that isn't a big surprise to you. And I gave Sheriff Ward lots of different ways he could get out of this and protect the Hammonds. The Hammonds deserve that protection. Okay? And they did. Now, and we're just releasing a press release about that. And I've been to the Hammonds' home, and I talked to Susie and, and their son, Rusty, was it Rusty? Steven. No, Stephen's in jail. Rusty. Yeah. Rusty. I think it was Rusty. Yeah, big guy. And uh, it, it actually happened coincidentally to be uh, Dwight and Susie's uh, 51st? Was it 51st wedding anniversary? And some family member sent her flowers while we were there and she told us that it was their anniversary. And Dwight had just turned 75. And so this is almost... I mean, I certainly hope I live past 80, but I don't think it's going to be a lot of worthwhile living after 80 that much, you know. I've already had heart problems, you know. And so is he, and he's not been that healthy. This is almost a death sentence for him. But the problem is, he already served his time. And you know this? He paid a $400,000 fine. 400000 Well, they must be millionaires, huh? Do you know who raised it for him? All the other ranchers and neighbors in the community so that they could stay out of trouble from the, from the FBI and the federal government. Family and friends and the community and fellow ranchers raised that $400,000 for them. I'm sure the Hammonds paid some. This is a good family, this is a good people, and totally against uh, double jeopardy laws. But even more than that, $400,000 fine violates the Eighth Amendment, excessive fines and bail. I mean, there were so many different crimes committed here. And so I told Sheriff Ward, I said, look, just tell the federal government you've arrested Dwight and Steve. Just arrest them. And go to the prosecutor and tell them you've got them under arrest. Make up some charge. I don't care. You can tell them they violated gun laws, whatever. Go ahead, arrest them. And then just keep postponing it indefinitely. And you tell the feds, they're under my custody and we're waiting to take these people to trial. Sorry, you know how these things can go. You know? And the process is slow and hard. But I'm telling you, this was a, this was a, a difficult position uh, to put the sheriffs in. And, 
And I'm telling you, this whole thing has not helped Sheriff Palmer at all. Has not. And Sheriff Palmer has shared some of his uh, personal feelings about all this with me. And like I said, he's one of our best, and he was our first constitutional sheriff in this country. And so, if this had been in his county, and they hadn't involved Sheriff Palmer, they got him involved after the fact somewhat. But uh, if this had been in his county, and they hadn't contacted him, I would not be on the occupier side whatsoever. And so, if we're going to 